Welcome to For the Common Good with Juanita, a show where we inform, inspire, and empower our businesses, communities, and people just like you. And I am your host, Juanita Farrow. I'm excited about the show today. We're understanding our history, the history of a nation. We know that's vital to the growth and development of our country. Simply put, we learn from our past and it helps us to create a brighter future. Our topic today is understanding the history of one of America's black churches located in Colonial Williamsburg. The historic Baptist Church, First Baptist Church, celebrated 244 years. Yes, you heard me correct, 244 years. Now, members of the church, along with the community partners, have come together to uncover and document and present this rich history of one of America's oldest black churches, starting in 1776. And we have with us today on the show our guest, Connie Matthews Harshaw, who is the president of Let Freedom Ring Foundation. And we have Jack Gary, who's the director of archaeology for the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation. And appearing later on the show, we will have Liz Montgomery, who's chair of the History Committee Ministry of the Historic First Baptist Church. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Connie, I wanted to ask you, what is going on now in the historic First Baptist Church of Williamsburg? You're uncovering a lot of great history. Tell me about it. We are. We're excited because um, we right now have the nation's attention. It is not by coincidence that this first church, when America fought for its freedom, religious freedom, from Great Britain, and in the same year, you have African Americans, free and enslaved, organizing to worship in the manner that they want to worship. So this church started. It moved from a plantation, Green Springs Plantation, to another place, Raccoon Chase, um, in an attempt to hide the um, demonstrative and expressions. That, you know, we, we pray with our feet. And so we were a little loud. So then you have a townsman who rides through and he he sees this and he's so compelled that he donates some land for this group to worship at a time when it was just not the thing to do. So we are now uncovering the history. Yeah. That's fascinating and so courageous out there. Can you imagine during that time what it took to start that I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine. And I can't imagine the story, um, the whole story being told, um, not just for the African-Americans, but for Mr. Cole, the Cole family, who actually donated this land um, to protect these people as they worshiped. Because if you think about right now what we're doing in this nation, having a conversation, a different, a difficult conversation on race, to have a white townsman donate his property, his land, so that these black people could worship safely. Um, it's just an amazing story to tell. And so now um, we're working with our partners, Colonial Williamsburg and also the College of William and Mary and anybody else in the community that wants to do it, because we think that this is a national treasure. The story is one that is compelling and it has to be told. It has to be told. And this is such an important time in our nation right now to tell such a story. It's a story about coming together to do mm -hmm. something for the common good. That's right. That's right. When the narrative across the globe is what happened in Charlottesville, and it's so filled with hate. You know, we want to tell a story that's compelling. We want to tell a story about a town where it was 52% black and 48% white. And they lived on the same street and they went to the same places. They shopped at the same places. We had to talk to each other. We had to. Um, and, you know, truth be known, they peered into our worship service because it was quite a bit more spirited than theirs. Very lively. So, yes, yes very lively. <laughs> So, yes, that's what we're doing in Williamsburg. Now, you also say that it makes a difference 
in how we tell the story, how the story is told. So it's not just about telling the story. It makes a difference in how we tell that story. That's right. I, I went to Williamsburg in middle school. I'm, I'm too old now to even tell you when that was. But um, when I came to Williamsburg, I saw the colonial interpreters and I saw all of the things that happened. And the only thing I saw was that there were slaves. Well, I knew that. But what I did not see was the free black that were there. I did not see the church. I did not see the story that I could identify and be proud of. And so the way that we tell the story is very important. We've got to tell the whole story. Jack and, and Colonial Williamsburg, they've dug up the parking lot. The trees have come down. We're starting to find things that say we were here and we mattered. Connie, why don't you tell us about the Let Freedom Ring Foundation? You're president of the foundation. Why I was am. the foundation created? Well, um, <laughs> In 2015, Colonial Williamsburg restored a bell for us, an artifact in our church. And that bell, as you probably know, went to Washington so that the president, the first African-American president, could ring it to open the museum. Well, we got back to town and we thought, you know, this story is much larger than that bell. Mm -hmm. And so we need to develop an organization or a unity, something in the church so that we can collect protect and preserve all of the artifacts and of course find them first mm -hmm. and uh, so we formed uh, a foundation and I am honored to be their president and we formed this foundation so that it would be composed of not just church members mm -hmm. it's not a church ministry mm -hmm. it's a foundation where we have community partners we have William and Mary we have media we have Jody Allen we have uh, the lemon project we have uh, state senators on this foundation board because we want to make sure that the community is plugged in to mm -hmm. this because again it is not just our church mm -hmm. it is a national treasure we wanted that community buy-in so it's very representative of the yes. community yes. and how has it gone so far it's amazing we've uh we've we've got jack starring in our first mini documentary Ooh, okay <laughs> <laughs> we have captured on film the whole story. Mm -hmm. We want to tell the whole story because the church continues to make history. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had Bishop Michael Curry come in. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. King came in 19, seven, mm -hmm. 1962. We have a lot of things that continue to happen. Uh, Catherine Rowe, the first female president, College of William and Mary in 400 years. So we continue to make history and we, we want to make sure that we tell that whole story. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The historic First Baptist Church founded in 1776. Now that's history. We'll be right back. Welcome back to For the Common Good with your host, Juanita Farrow. We're talking to Jack Gary now, and Jack is the director of the director of archaeology for the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation. Right. Yep. Well, that's exciting. So, Jack, tell me, what do you hope to find as you're digging this excavation on Nassau Street? Yeah, as, as Connie said, it's important for us to see this history. And one of the things that we want to do with our excavation I mean, is literally see it. We want to mm -hmm. find the remains of the very first church that the congregation was worshiping, worshiping in mm -hmm. on Nassau Street. So we know that there is a building there as early as 1818, probably earlier than that. So, mm -hmm. so the congregation has come out of secret. They're worshiping in town in their own building. It's identified as the Baptist Meeting House in mm -hmm. 1818. So we know there's a structure there called the Meeting House. What does it look like? Mm -hmm. We don't know yet. Don't know. That's what the excavations are really focused on. So we want to see that, but there's also the church that succeeded that one, mm -hmm. what we call the 1856 church. Mm -hmm. We have photographs of that. There are members of the congregation that went to that church mm -hmm. and that the remains of that church are also underground. So seeing those foundations, seeing the remains of that church, that's also part of this as well. So, you know, at a very basic level, it's about mm -hmm. seeing. Mm -hmm. things, you know, and be able to... to Seeing, touching, feeling, at, all of those things. At, at, absolutely. It's making it a place again. Wow. It's making the... Yeah, it's making a place again. That's, that's that where we're going. That has to be a very moving experience. And I, I see you have it sort of open for the community. They can stop by and they can see what's happening. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's yeah. So our guests, our, our regular guests to Colonial Williamsburg, 
can see this. So we have a you know we have a wide distribution. We have a wide net, if you will, uh-huh. at Colonial Williamsburg, mm-hmm. and so a lot of people are, are seeing what we're doing. But more than that, or just as important as that, it's for the congregation. It's for the members of the church to come by mm-hmm. to see it, and we have we have folks come by every single day to drop in and see the progress. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't slow us down. We like it. That's good. <laughs> but I can imagine it makes the community feel very much a part of this project, and that was very important to you. I can imagine. Yeah, absolutely. So, what what story will the artifacts that you're finding? What story will that tell? Yeah, I, at the most basic level, there will be artifacts that will tell us what did the church look like. How old was the first building that we find? What did it look like? Can we reconstruct it? And when we do, we'll do it very accurately based on those artifacts. But there are other questions, too, that we want to ask of these artifacts. What was it like for people worshiping on this site? Mm -hmm. Um, Enslaved people were coming here from nearby plantations and worshiping. Well, do the artifacts tell that story? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're already starting to see that in some of the artifacts we're finding, even things as mundane as... Uh, an ink bottle. We found the remains of an ink bottle. Ooh. And so we find those all over town. But when you put it in the context of the church, you realize, right. well, wait a minute, this, this ink bottle could have held the ink that was recording the baptisms, that was recording the minutes of the mm. church. And that, you know, that changes a very simple, mundane object into something very powerful. <laughs> well, let me ask you this question. How did you know where to start digging? I, I know there was some kind of Sonar, uh, radar, or can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. So we um, we knew that the, the church stood there, at least the 1856 right. ch- church stood there. Um, excavations that Colonial Williamsburg did in 1957 had found um, some earlier remains of a building, but they didn't really go much further, and they mapped those, so we knew that was there. But then we had to ask the question of, is it still there? Mm-hmm. A parking lot has been sitting on top of this site for the past almost 60 years. Wait a minute. A parking lot was on top of the church? A parking lot was on top of the church. Wow. And, and this is, quite frankly, this is a, a part of our history that we are confronting now and saying that was not the way to treat this, <laughs> this nationally significant site. So as Connie said, we've taken that parking lot away. We've taken all the trees that were planted there away so that we can do this work. And one of the first steps was using ground penetrating radar to make okay. sure that the, uh, the parking lot had not destroyed anything. Uh, associated with the church. So yeah, we used ground penetrating radar and sure enough, right away it showed us the foundations of these buildings were still there. That is absolutely amazing. Yeah, And yeah. so that sort of led to where you would start the dig. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we were able to hard target some areas right away and say, okay, now let's get in, let's take a look at it, make sure everything is still intact. Can we get more information from it? If we do a larger excavation and the answer already is Yes, absolutely. And we're planning right now to do a year and a half long excavation to fully, fully explore this. So site. based on the preliminary findings, yes. then that leads you to the next phase. Exactly. Oh, that yeah. is so fascinating. Yeah. Now, what does Colonial Williamsburg Foundation plan to do with the artifacts that you're finding? Yeah, so very simply, the artifacts come into our laboratory. We wash mm-hmm. them, we catalog them, we identify them. Uh, for, for very fragile artifacts, we have a conservator who can stabilize them, stop the, the deterioration yeah. process, and keep them uh, safe, quite frankly. And then we will uh, we'll curate them in archivally safe storage spaces. Okay, that's the boring part. <laughs> the fun part, then, is to actually you know, study these, examine these, ask the questions that we want to ask of the artifacts, and do it in conjunction with the congregation and the church, and have their input into this, and then to say, okay, what artifacts are really tell a really powerful story, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then and then incorporate those into exhibits at the Scotland Street Church mm-hmm. for whatever we do, mm-hmm. whatever we if we recreate the church, these these artifacts go back into it. The Art Museum of Colonial Williamsburg creating exhibits again in conjunction with the church, um, so putting these things on display for folks to see and to learn from. That's that, that's kind of the progression that I would see you know these materials taking. Well, that's amazing. I know it was really important for you to to hear the voice of the church throughout this entire yeah, project, correct? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We couldn't we we couldn't and shouldn't do it without <laughs> without the church. So we're talking about a true partnership here. Yeah, yeah, a- absolutely. And I think that's for me that's one of the most important parts of this project. What we see out of the ground, what we what's in the ground is in the ground, mm-hmm. and that's exciting to us as archaeologists. But it has been the partnership, the collaboration, the discussions, the the being on site. Physically on the site of this church and having discussions with community members. You know, it's a community project. That mm-hmm. I, that that's been the most 
rewarding part of it so mm -hmm. far for me. I'm sure you probably have gotten a lot of questions from the community uh, about the project. I mean, I'm, I'm sure various questions. What, what were some of the things that people wondered starting a project like this? Was there anything in particular yeah. that they thought? Yeah, I, I'll tell you, there, there are two, two questions we get all the time. One is, are you going to rebuild the church if you if you find it? <laughs> and I, I think the answer is, if, if we can do it accurately, yes. Wow. The second question, and it's a, it, it can be one that's tough to grapple with, is, well, what, what happened to the 1856 church? How come it's not here mm. anymore? And um, we, we answer that question up front. And you know, we, we say Colonial Williamsburg removed that structure. They demolished the structure because it was not part of the program at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so this project now is a way for us to you know, confront that and to, and to rectify it and to, you know, to put back in place you know, um, you know, this nationally significant building, congregation, give it a place to tell the story. And to some degree, that's very healing. It's very healing for our community. So we're, we're correcting some of the past and moving forward with such a great project of history. Thank you so much. That, this is really, really exciting. We're talking about the historic First Baptist Church founded in 1776, and we're uncovering the history of this first African-American church. We'll be right back. Welcome back to For the Common Good with Juanita. And we have with us now on the show, Liz Montgomery. Liz is the chair of the History Committee Ministry of the Historic First Baptist Church. Liz, I wanted to ask you, I understand that the church has been placed on the state and national register of historic places. That must have been a, just a monumental process to undertake. Can you tell me a little bit about that process? Yes, I can, and thank you for having me. I would like to say that uh, this process is not as easy as most people think. I can imagine. And it takes quite a few years to do that. Years. It started wow. about 35 years ago, actually, in terms of preparing the information, getting the documentation, researching the history and making sure that it was all correct. Mm. Then in 2015, that's when we applied. And that process was quite interesting. Oh, I can imagine. To say the least. Um, it had to go to a review board and it was done under the leadership of our past chair, Miss mm. Opaline Davis, and mm -hmm. I have to give her some props for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she'll appreciate that. <laughs> Well, that is quite, um, so in terms of the process, it took um, uh, maybe scrutinizing the information, going back and forth. Did they have questions about your application? Was it an application that you submitted? It was an application, and yes, they did come back to us. Mm -hmm. um, it started in 2015, but um, by no, in August of 2015, but by November, they came back to us mm -hmm. and asked us for additional information. Oh, really? So then we had to... Uh, submit information, architect architectural designs. Oh. We had to introduce some new information on photos, some new primary source information on oral history and um, other documentations that we had in order to submit it. So we did that, but we also had to go to the College of William and Mary to ask their people to assist us because the process was really that difficult. So what, were, what was the college doing? Helping you with some of the research or gathering some of the information that they needed? The archeological um, uh, project manager at the College of William & Mary and his assistant helped us organize all the information oh, wow. uh, before we did that process. What a wonderful resource. So that was a resource that we really needed to do. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Wow. Well, congratulations on the national registration of the, uh, the First Baptist Church for historic places. That is a 
incredible undertaking. I wanted to ask you about the Freedom Bell. So we've heard a little about the Freedom Bell on the show so far, and we know that our first a black president, uh, Barack Obama, rang the Freedom Bell at the opening of the Smithsonian, the African American Museum. Now, what are some of the other artifacts in the church that people can expect to see when they visit the church? When people come to the church, the first thing they do is enter our vestibule. Uh -huh. In the vestibule right now, we have the original furnishings from the 1855 church. The original furnishings. All of the pulpit furnishings are there and intact. We also have a Bible uh, from that church. We also have, uh, as you walk down in the sanctuary, there is also uh, a couple of tables. They really were collection tables mm -hmm. that we had. And they what they did was they refurbished those tables and left the granite tops on them. So those are tables that they can look at. And they also have, we have a place that we call the upper gallery because we had to use all of the church mm -hmm. to try to tell our story. So in our upper gallery, we have furnishings from um, the communion table, the original communion, communion table that was in the uh, church on Nassau Street. We also have wooden um, collection plates because during that time there were, weren't many dollars going in those plates. They were little nickels and dimes and quarters. So they had wooden ta uh, plates. So we have those original wooden plates. We also have um, chairs from the choir. We have the piano from the church that was there. Um, and um, we have uh, several other artifacts that are really mm -hmm. important that people would want to see mm -hmm. uh, when they come to First Baptist. Oh, that is so amazing. Now, I know that you are part, you do the tours of the church. You are certainly on the history committee and you all are responsible for doing tours of the church. Let's talk a little bit about some of those tours. Um, when viewers visit the church, um, I guess they can call, or how do they get appointments for tours? For they can call the church to get appointments, but during this pandemic, mm -hmm. our church has been closed since March. Mm -hmm. So therefore we have not been doing any tours, mm -hmm. but we've been answering a lot of questions. Uh, for instance, in our lower gallery downstairs, we also have uh, items that we can send to people. We can have documentations mm -hmm. on, on some of those uh, items that we can send to them if they ask us for them. But we're not giving any tours at all mm -hmm. because of the social distancing Certainly. required and the recommendations by the governor of the state of Virginia. So we're hoping that we can get to a space mm -hmm. where we can begin doing that again mm -hmm. uh, because it's really important. We have one tour right now scheduled for next week for the College of William and Mary, but it's going to be a virtual tour. Virtual tour, tour yes. So this is something new for us. We the haven't world done we, <laughs> we haven't done one yet, but we're excited about doing mm -hmm. that one. And uh, because the archaeological site on Nassau Street is open and they've also opened the carriage house. I'm hoping that I can get permission to do it over there as opposed to doing it at First Baptist and the virtual part of it okay. if the students are mm -hmm. able to come out. Sure. I'm not sure yet. Mm -hmm. We're, we put in a call for that, but mm -hmm. that's the only one we have scheduled right now through the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Hopefully by next year, mm -hmm. we'll be able to be open mm -hmm. um, maybe in the next six or eight months. We'll have to wait and see. We just don't know. Wow. But what an exciting time for the church. It really is an exciting time for the church, and it has taken quite a long time for this to happen. But this is time for it to happen. I'm sure the first person that actually started this tour ministry, Miss Opaline Davis, Miss Marie Shepherd, Miss Jean Fenton, and our Pastor Emeritus all started this. Uh, about 35 years ago, and I think that it has really come to uh, a, a shining spot yes, in yes. First Baptist history. Full circle. What an exciting time. Thank you all so much for joining our show and talking about such an important time in the history of our country, uncovering the history of one of the oldest African-American churches in America.
the historic First Baptist Church, founded in 1776. I hope you get lots of calls and lots of emails and all kinds of things. People are going to be really interested in this because it really is a time for healing in our country. And I think bringing all of this together and telling this untold story is so important to that. Thank you all again for joining our show. Thank you for having us. And for our viewers, you'll see the information listed with credits and how you can get in touch with the foundation, um, the Let Freedom Ring Foundation, the church, the historic First Baptist Church, um, as well as the uh, Colonial Williamsburg Foundation. Thank you for joining For the Common Good with Juanita. We'll see you next time.